Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about initial evaluation and management of poison victims. When we manage uh, a poison case or a toxicological case or a drug overdose case or a poison induced uh, medical problem, we can uh, we can make a diagnosis on depending on some of the toxidromes. Toxidrome means uh, there are set of set of uh, symptoms or signs which can indicate uh, the patient has taken a peculiar type of uh, poison. So from that we can uh, find out what are the common uh, toxins or po common poisons in that group and we can make out a possible diagnosis of uh, that toxidrome and we can treat according to that symptoms. So first one is anticholinergic toxins like atropine overdose, belladonna alkaloids, dethura poison, scopolamine, antihistamines, mushrooms, psychoactive drugs, tricyclic antidepressants. So their main symptoms are tachycardia. You know that when we give atropine, that produces tachycardia. You can see the uh, clinical findings, uh, what you observe when you are giving atropine to the patient, that all things you can see in this type of patients. They can have heart rate increase, tachycardia, high degree fever, dilated pupil, that is very important. When you are giving atropine, you can see many patients, people will be dilated. Warm and dry skin, urinary retention, that is one important thing that when we give atropine, you can see the patient develops urinary retention. That's why whenever we are treating the patient with atropine like OP poison and all, we put a catheter before the atropine treatment. Paralytic ileus, delirium. So all findings you can see when we are giving uh, atropine in a patient like OP poison, when we are treating with atropine, whatever we are seeing, that is the finding seen anticholinergic syndrome. So, mad as hat, blind as bat, red as beet, hot as a hair, and dry as bone. So, these are the, uh, this is a mnemonic for uh, uh, anticholinergic uh, toxicity. And that main thing is dethura poison. In, in our uh, country, many patients come with dethura poison, uh, to year. Another important drug is uh, drug poison is uh, tricyclic antidepressant poison. Now next is cholinergic uh, muscarinic syndrome. So you can remember it as uh, sludge and dumbbells. The main group of drugs or poisons in that uh, uh, cholinergic uh, muscarinic group is organophosphates, uh, physiostigmine, pyridostigmine, carbamates, mushrooms, pilocarbine. In that organophosphate and carbamate poisons are very very common in our country. It can remember a sludge, salivation, lacrimation, urination, defecation, GI cramps, emesis. Mainly all the secretions in our body is going to increase according to these symptoms. Dumbbells also we can remember, increased di uh, stools, diarrhea, increased urination, meiosis. That is very important, just opposite of the uh, uh, atropine. Atropine toxicity, what all we are seeing, just opposite of that we can see here, cholinergic uh, uh, muscarinic reactions. Bronchorrhea, bradycardia, atropine when we are giving, it, it produces tachycardia, here we get bradycardia. Bronchoconstriction, emesis, lacrimation, salivation, respiratory system, we can see wheezing. So, the most important uh, 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 toxin in that group is organophosphates and carbamates. Whatever findings seen in organophosphate poison that is seen in cholinergic mascarinic group or mascarinic toxidromes, just opposite of that you are seeing in atropine induced problem that is anticholinergic syndrome. So once you understand what is the syndrome, what is the clinical findings in OP poison, you can easily remember the uh, findings of uh, uh, anticholinergic group. Now, cholinergic nicotinic actions, you can remember uh, midriasis, tachycardia, weakness, hypertension, hyperglycemia, fasciculation, sweating, abdominal pain, paresis. So, you should remember whatever is seen in the previous uh, group that is mascarinic, and that is also organophosphates and uh, uh, carbamates, just opposite of that you can see here midriasis and tachycardia. That's why some of the patients who is having OP compound poison, you get tachycardia and midriasis. That is not very common. Predominant cases are mainly uh, small pupil and bra uh, bradycardia. 
but some patients with op poison you can get this type of symptoms so op poison can have both uh, nicotinic and muscarinic uh, clinical finding then uh, another important uh, this one is nicotine uh, nicotine uh, poison but nowadays uh, this type of poisons are very rare in our uh, practice black widow spider bites are not very common in india uh, opioid uh, poison or opioid syndrome hypoventilation hypotension meiosis sedation and hypothermia in that you have to remember that the most important drug in that group most commonly used drug is morphine morphine if you remember the uh, clinical features of morphine rest all things are same for other drugs also another important drug what we use in our practice is fentanyl heroin is a, a recreational drug uh, other drugs we are not using in our clinical practice morphine we should remember fentanyl also comes in that group heroin toxicity is a major uh, problem in that opioid group sympathomimetic again amphetamine uh, ephedrine phenyl propylamine theophylline caffeine cocaine uh, herbal synthetic marijuana all these things are uh, uh, mdma all these things are recreational drugs you should remember uh, adrenergic symptoms like patient can have tachycardia hypertension midriasis agitation seizures diaphoresis hyperthermia psychosis so all these features are similar to adrenergic overdose so uh, any patient coming with that we have to uh, think about uh, recreational drug overdose like amphetamine and uh, cocaine or marijuana mdma use now once we admit any case with uh, suspected toxicological uh, problem or toxin ingestion we have to always uh, take some basic investigation like complete blood count liver function test renal function test arterial blood gas analysis chest x ray to rule out aspiration ards ecg to see what is acute ct interval whether then uh, there are any arrhythmias are there or not toxic screens like we have to see Uh, urine and blood for toxic material screening and drug levels are also very important some drugs uh, like uh, when we are taking toxic screen sometimes we will be getting only qualitative assessment so in that type of patients if there is a quantitative assessment we can see whether the that drug is producing the problem or not suppose uh, we, if we are checking the urine or blood sample for diazepam or uh, uh, any other drug if you are seeing only qualitative assessment they will tell it is positive or negative that doesn't mean that that drug is producing all the problem so if you know the quantitative analysis that is not available for all the drugs you have to contact with a regional uh, toxicological lab so if it is available it is well and good we can get a clear picture whether that drug is producing uh, this toxicological problem or not now initial management is very very important in, in in like any other patient we have to take care of patient's airway breathing circulation because patient can have increased secretions patient can have facial injuries patient can have facial burns like so many uh, face and respiratory tract problems can be there in many patients and circulation some patients can have high bp some patients can have hypotension tachycardia bradycardia so many abnormal circulatory findings also can be there in patients who is having Uh, toxicological uh, or toxin intake uh, induced problems now some of the drugs like naloxone glucose time in iv fluids will discuss afterwards so airway breathing uh, circulation must be taken care in all type of patients who come to emergency room whether it is a toxicological case or a heart attack or trauma whatever it is we have to take care airway breathing circulation now some patients may require cardiopulmonary resuscitation that has to be done according to acls protocol here also we have to follow acls protocol i am not discussing that protocol here because that takes longer time now iv naloxone is one drug which is uh, patients with uh, severe respiratory depression or uh, suspicion of opioid addicts it can produce uh, 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 some reversal for this uh, respiratory depression 2 mg iv in adults 0.1 mg per kg in children but that should be used by a specialist unnecessarily using naloxone sometimes can produce uh, more uh, uh, more adverse effects than uh, uh, benefit 
dextrose many patients who is having um, uh, toxicological uh, problem they can have hypoglycemia some will have prolonged hypoglycemia and effects of prolonged hypoglycemia in that type of patients we will have to give dextrose but remember patient who has uh, having continuous uh, vomiting or chronic alcoholism if you don't give thiamine before uh, dextrose they can have severe thiamine deficiency vernicke encephalopathy so whenever we are giving uh, dextrose in a unconscious patient give thiamine along with dextrose or give thiamine first then give dextrose otherwise patient may go to vernicke encephalopathy now iv fluids should be given uh, in hypotension noradrenaline can be used these all protocols uh, in other types of hypotension should be followed now decontamination is one major uh, issue in uh, patient who is having uh, ingestion of toxins tropical topical decontamination can be done because uh, many drugs or toxins which can accumulate on the skin and uh, fat tissues then slowly it can spread to the circulatory system so to avoid that whatever uh, uh, like skin contamination is uh, there during the admission we have to thoroughly clean the body remove the clothings before uh, taking the patient in remove the clothings and preserve it for uh, medical legal aspects and uh, wash the body completely clean it uh, and uh, remove all toxins on the skin and uh, other parts that has to be done activated charcoal is another decontamination method the usual dose is 1 to 2 gram per kg you can give 1 gram per kg body weight it can be made as a slurry in water or Uh, soft drinks because it will be difficult to take it as a slurry in a plain water so we have to put it in like uh, 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 like fruit juices and uh, can be given to patient so activated charcoal can uh, 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 like uh, absorb some of the toxins and remove from the stomach dose is 1 to 2 gram per kg body weight usual dose is 1 gram per kg body weight Uh, 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 it can be given through the rail tube so many drugs can be uh, desensitized or uh, removed from the stomach by activated charcoal uh, like ac inhibitor amphetamine long list of drugs are there so you can see this chart whether it is a uh, phytotoxin or a drug induced uh, uh, toxemia you can remove the drugs uh, if uh, the patient comes less than 1 hour to emergency room after one hour uh, routine uh, charcoal may not be very helpful like if you giving single dose of charcoal may not be helpful in a patient who is having uh, present who is presenting to er after one or two hours so if the patient comes less than one or two hours then it will be very useful it can absorb most of the toxins and remove it from the intestine so we have to see the list and understand what are the drugs which can be removed by activated charcoal and which are the phytotoxins which can be removed from the intestine by activated charcoal some toxins cannot be removed by activated charcoal like uh, alcohol or toxic alcohols sodium chloride metals organic solvents acids bases uh, cyanides all these things cannot be removed by activated charcoal so no need to try this but in an unknown poison when we don't know what he has taken we can try activated charcoal there will not be any major adverse effects even if the, when there is guideline says that it should be given in less than 1 hour we can give in uh, like activated charcoal when we suspect large quantity of poison is taken or extended release tablets are taken or if the patient has taken uh, uh, poison and you assume that there is a slow uh, transit time like a parkinson disease and all patients will not have Uh, uh, rapid removal of uh, toxins from the intestine so all these conditions we can try charcoal there is no contraindication for charcoal only thing when we are giving through the oral route patient can have aspirations so put a rail tube and through that only we have to give activated charcoal multi dose charcoal administration is another important way of giving charcoal in toxins uh, uh, which can uh, which can be uh, like eliminated through the distal part of the Uh, ga tract uh, or uh, if the patient has taken a, a high dose of uh, you know, poison or if the patient is having uh, extended release of tablets all these things we can try multi dose uh, activated charcoal initial dose uh, 
uh, is 12.5 gram per hour then it can be continuous so definitive indication for multi dose activated charcoal carbamazepine quinine dapsone phenobarbital theophylline digoxin slow releasing quetiapine amet amatoxin colchicin acceleration of elimination uh, is uh, like drugs like uh, Uh, acetyl salicylic acid aspirin amitriptyline phenytoin pyroxicam salicylates citlopalm venlafaxin some so all these uh, toxins you can give uh, multi dose uh, activated charcoal another important way of removal of uh, toxin is charcoal hemoperfusion here we require a dialysis machine to do this charcoal hemoperfusion is used as an adjunctive therapy to Uh, remove the drugs from the our the blood our blood uh, it rapidly lowers the plasma drug levels with parallel improve, uh, improvement in the patient's clinical condition so you can see the picture here uh, blood is uh, passed through a uh, cartridge that contains cartridge uh, that contains uh, uh, charcoal uh, it will be done with the help of a uh, dialysis machine so you can remove the uh, uh, absorbed uh, problems uh, through the uh, circulation itself now gastric lavage is can be done if the patient comes less than 1 hour uh, of the presentation but the tubes for gastric lavage is different from what we are using for rails tube so here you can see it's a large tube more than 36 french for adults and 24 french for children should be used and uh, you can give even bowel irrigation through this tube and you can remove the water from the stomach uh, uh, on return so you can give fluids and take out the fluids through the same tube and that is gastric lavage nowadays we are not trying this because many of uh, patients come to er is after one or two hours because they go to uh, they try lot of other uh, uh, other methods to remove the toxin like induced vomiting all these things then only they come to the hospital by the time the time will be uh, over one or two hours after one or two hours only many patients are coming to er so it is not recommended after one or two hours but if uh, if, uh, if the if the patient comes less than one hour if they are taken larger amount of toxins we can try all these things but this procedure is very painful procedure adequate sedation has to be uh, adequate pain relief has to be given before before all these procedures all bowel irrigation by polyethylene glycol electrolyte solution or peg that is very important that can be tried because they produce uh, 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 they can remove the um, uh, contents in the intestine through stools so they can fasten the removal of uh, stools which have uh, toxins so that they, they can prevent the absorption from the intestine especially uh, calcium channel blockers theo theophylline lithium all iron tablets all these things we can try whole bowel irrigation with peck so 35 ml per kg per hour in children and 1.2 liter per hour in uh, uh, adults or adolescents is the dose of uh, peck uh, whole bowel ir- irrigation alkaline diuresis can be tried in patients who is saying salicylate and phenobarbital poison here the solution is made combining 1 liter of 5% dextrose with 100 mg of soda bicarb and 20 to 40 mg of potassium that that is given because when we are giving soda bicarb there is a shift of potassium occurs so we add uh, potassium to that and rate of 10 ml per kg per hour can be infused in adults and 2 ml per kg per hour in children can be given try to keep the urinary ph at 7.5 to 8 and potassium must be uh, repleted or potassium should be replaced adequately hypernatremia alkalemia fluid overload can occur as a side effects of soda bicarb infusion this is useful in conditions like salicylates and phenobarbital poison intralipid is another important uh, anti toxin or uh, initial management of uh, toxicological cases iv bolus 1 to 1.5 ml per kg in 1 minute of a 20% lipid emulsion solution can be given it can be given in toxicity of due to diltiazem verapamil they are beta block so they are calcium channel blockers and beta blocker poisoning 
psychotropic drugs like ketapine, sertalin, tricyclic antidepressants, haloperidol, bupivacaine, chlorpromazine and antidisarrhythmics can be, uh, this uh, drug can be intra intravenous lipid emulsion can be tried. Now dialysis is an answer for many uh, many drugs which can be dialysable like anti-epileptic drug overdose, barbiturates, gabapentin, pregabalin, valproate, uh, lithium, isoniazide, salicylates, theophylline, caffeine, carbamazepine, methanol, ethylene glycol, ethambutol, metformin, methotrexate, sodium valproate. So all these things uh, we can try um, uh, dialysis. So dialysis in a, uh, is an option when uh, some of the drug toxicities which can be removed through the dialysis machine that is a that is an option so we can uh, use dialysis machine for charcoal hemoperfusion uh, we can use um, uh, dialysis for removal of uh, some of the drugs what is seen in the screen and some patients can develop renal failure because of uh, uh, toxins there also we can use dialysis machine so dialysis machine has got a major role in toxicological management. Many patients develop uh, problems because of these drugs. Uh, some patients can have uh, secondary hyperkalemia. Some patients can have myoglobinuria. So all these conditions, uh, we can use dialysis machine as a as a secondary option if the drugs are not working properly. Now this list uh, shows the major antidotes uh, for uh, common. Uh, poisons or more common toxins. So first one is toxins and second part is antidotes. So you can uh, see this uh, chart and find out which are useful antidotes we can use in toxicological cases. So we have discussed about initial management in emergency room uh, for a toxicological case. So when the patient come with alleged history of some uh, poison intake or toxin intake or drug intake uh, before uh, making a uh, diagnosis we have to take a proper history how many, how many tablets he has taken whether he is on this tablet for a long time suddenly uh, some one or two tablets extra he has taken or uh, all of a sudden he has taken 10 20 tablets what type of preparation it is whether it is an extended release or a immediate release and uh, what what time he had taken food before or after the intake of uh, this one whether it is consumed along with alcohol or some other uh, material is taken all these things are important and toxidromes we have seen the five or six toxidromes in the initial slides that is also very important because uh, uh, in most of the emergency centers we will not be having any uh, point of care toxicological analysis lab so Toxidromes will help you what type of toxin he has taken and uh, and adequate sampling is very very important. We have to take urine and blood for toxicological analysis. Then according to toxidromes we have to treat the patient and once you get the proper diagnosis either from uh, the patient's bystanders may bring the uh, bottles uh, what we, he has consumed or uh, the drug strips he can we can get or prescriptions we can get. Uh, so all these things will help in emergency room. So we can treat according to toxidromes initially, then we can get a proper diagnosis from the toxicological lab. Here also qualitative and quantitative assessments are very, very important to make a diagnosis. And some specific specialist te te tests are required in organophosphate poison and carbamate poison and all. That also should be done. And treatment is mainly depending on the clinical features Antidotes we have seen, uh, the list of antidotes we have seen in the last slide, that is also very important. If you know the, according to clinical syndrome, if you can identify the poison initially itself, uh, these antidotes are very, very helpful. Otherwise, most of the cases we have to treat according to symptom, symptomatic treatment is very, very important. Whatever it is, if we give adequate treatment initially itself, we can avoid complication in a toxicological cases. Thank you. Thank you.